Hello there. God bless you. You are welcome to Prophetic Intercession with Amel. Always excited, always happy. Each time I God entrusts me with a word, the psalmist says, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. That is how happy I am. Each time I receive a fresh word, I am always excited. It never runs, it never ends i mean like it's a continuous process for me it's something that happens all the time i never get to a time when i am familiar or i am a complacent or i think that i i am god owes me a word each time there is a fresh word i am so happy because it takes god to entrust you it takes god to trust you to be able to entrust you with a prophetic message for someone it takes god to trust you to be able to entrust you with a word for someone. So this is a big deal for me. Whenever the Lord tells me that this is a prophetic word for someone, I'm so happy because I know that God has counted me worthy. It is not by works. It's not because um, I am too, you know, righteous, but because... It's just by his mercy. I am here just by his mercy. So I always count it um, for joy. I always... To me, this is always an opportunity that marvels me all the time. Hallelujah. And God gave me a beautiful word for someone. God says you have been declared not guilty. You did not do it. You have been declared not guilty. You did not do it. I mean, this blew my mind. <clears throat> this blew my mind. So today... How does God give me prophetic words? God gives me prophetic words by He might drop a scripture in my spirit, He might drop a particular word in my spirit, and then when I start maybe recording, He expounds why I'm recording, or He might drop a scripture when I go to read and then He expounds on the word He has given me, or He might use a circumstance or scenario. I mean, God has diverse ways He uses to speak. And this time, God was speaking to me through the book of Romans again. But this time around, is this um, chapter 4. Chapter 4 in the book of Romans. Now, it's talking about the life of Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham believed God so much, trusted in God, relied upon him so much so that he was accredited to him unto righteousness. He believed God, trusted in God, relied on in God so much so that it was accredited to him unto righteousness when I was reading um, Romans chapter 4 verse 20 the Bible says that, says that but Abraham never doubted never doubted he believed God for his faith and trust grew ever strong and he praised God for his blessings even before it happened and he was completely sure that God was well able to do anything he has promised. And now verse 22 says, And because of Abraham's faith, God forgave his sins and declared him not guilty. Now I ask myself, what is the correlation? Because of his faith, because he believed in the promise of God, because he trusted in God, because he relied upon God, God forgave him of every sin and declared him not guilty. It means there is a degree of faith you have in the promise of God. There is a degree of faith you have in the promise of God that he weighs all your weaknesses. There is how much you are going to trust God, believe in God, that he's going to just sideline every weakness of yours. It's going to stop being an issue. There is a way that you believe in the Lord. And you say, I mean, even when things are not happening the way they should, you say, Lord, I trust in you. I believe you're not going to let me down. I believe you will not let me down. You know, Abraham, God had promised him, you're going to have a child with Sarah. And he, he, he succumbed to pressure. I love God. God is so merciful. When God talks about Abraham, it seems like Abraham did everything right. No, God just needs to see a degree of faith in you and, and he can work with that. He can work with that. He just needs to see a degree of faith. 
Abraham succumbed to pressure when his wife said, go ahead and have an affair. Go ahead and have an affair with my, my, with my servant. And he succumbed to that pressure and indeed he had an affair. And the result of that child was Ishmael. And of course, Abraham should really love Ishmael because he did not have any other child. Abraham's faith was seen in obeying the, the wish of, of um, what's the name of his wife again? Um, um, Sarah. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot the name totally. <laughs> I mean, he obeyed. God said, obey what your wife is saying. Send Ishmael away. That was one of Abraham's greatest tests of faith. To let go of what you have at hand. Believing God for what you have not seen. Hmm. To let go of what you have at hand. Believing God for what you have not seen. It is so difficult. It is so difficult. I don't know if you have been in that position where you have to probably God is prompting your spirit to quit your job and believe him for something that you haven't seen yet. Or God could tell you, leave this relationship. This person is not the one for you. I am going to bring someone for you to actually leave that relationship where you have not seen the replacement. Or God tells you, let go of this thing and I will do this for you. You have not seen the replacement yet. And you decide to let go, trusting in God. That is the kind of faith God is not going to um, look down on. That is the kind of faith God will not act as though he has not seen it. God will not act as though he has not seen it. Seen it. That, is what made, that is what made Abraham distinguished. That is what made him. God's, the Bible says God forgave him. He believed in the promise of God. So many, so many at times we waver at the promise of God. God had told you something. And in the, the midst of the slightest adversity, you just want to bow out like you forget the promise God gave you. In the midst of the slightest challenge, you forget what God gave you. But God says by your faith, he can wave aside every weakness you have. Just by you believing in the promise of God, just by you trusting in the Lord, just by you relying on his word, you are forgiven. And the Bible says that he even, he even declares that you are not guilty at all. You are not found wanting in any way. Why? Because you believe in the promise of God over your life. I want to speak to someone, you are in that place where your faith is wavering. You are doubting the promise because it has taken a while. You are doubting, you are asking yourself, truly, would this ever really happen? Am I doing the right thing? You are asking yourself several questions. Now is the right time for you to go back and remember the things God told you. If you can write it down, good and fine, go ahead and write that down. Believe you me, your faith is going to open doors for you that you never ever imagined exist. Hallelujah. Was this word a blessing to you? Did you receive it with gladness? May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.